show you how I highlight and dye my hair. So first off, I start with the Dirty Volume Cream Developer, and I pour two ounces of that into my mixing bowl, and add one packet of L'Oreal Quick Blue. When you mix it, it has kind of a fluffy, foam-like consistency. So first I start by parting my hair how I normally wear it, and then I begin applying the lightning mixture there. So I work around the sides and the back, right at the top of my crown, and I just kind of work my way around and slowly get to the underneath layers, if that makes sense. So I slowly flip the sections over and work down towards my ears as I go. So starting at the top of the crown, working my way down. I'm also careful to just apply the mixture on my new root growth and I try to hold on to the part of my hair that's already been highlighted so it kind of blocks it from being covered again. I just focus on sort of lightly blending into it so there's not a demarcation line there. As I get close to my roots, I make sure to leave a little bit of space so I don't go right up to my scalp. So I like to leave about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. Uh, that way I don't get any kind of weird coloration right up my scalp. My hair is quite dark underneath, so I'm going to go ahead and add a few highlights there as well and towards the tips of my hair and just kind of brighten it up a little bit underneath. I let the lightning mixture sit on my hair for about 30 minutes and then I showered and washed it out. I forgot to turn on the water heater before I got in, so it was a cold, invigorating shower for me. I towel dried my hair and let it air dry for a while and then I used my neutral protein filler and I pour it in this little spray bottle because it makes it easier to use. And I just spritz it into my hair. Then I comb it through gently and I let it sit on my hair for 20 minutes before applying my color. For coloring my hair, I'm using this 20 volume cream developer. So I pour 3 ounces of that into my mixing bowl and then I add my color. I'm using Wella Color Charm in 8 in, so I pour the whole bottle of that in. And then I just apply by brushing it on. Oops, okay, I just spilt some down there. Alright, let's go ahead and stop and take a break and clean that up. Alright, we're back at it. So I have my hair split into sections and I just take one thin section at a time and apply the dye all the way from root to tip. And I work on one side and then switch to the other. I start in the back actually, so I do the back sections first and then I move to the front sections. So I'm just working on finishing the top, just brushing the dye in. And I'm excited to see how this turns out because this is the first time I've used 8 in. I've usually gone with 7 in. My final section is actually in the very back here. This is mostly all my natural hair other than a few bits of highlights that I did on the ends. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of those, just applying the dye pretty much just over those highlights. And I thought I'd just mention that my nail polish remover actually worked like a breeze to get that spot of dye off my countertop. Thank you, Zoya. So I let the dye sit on my hair for 30 minutes and then I washed it out. I always like to let my hair air dry for a while first and then I add a heat protectant and use my blow dryer. I'm using my Sultra Temptress blow dryer. Good morning guys, it's the next day and I figured I better wait until daylight so I could show you the final results, but it was just last night that I highlighted and dyed my hair and here are the results. I'm really happy with how it turned out and it, it wasn't like a surprise or anything how it was going to turn out because I've been doing my hair for a long time and I kind of know what to expect out of it, but I did change one thing. I decided to use a, a shade lighter than what I was previously previously using, excuse me. Um, so for the past year, I was using Wella 7N, which is a medium neutral blonde. And this time I decided to go with Wella 8N. And I really like the color that I got out of that. And actually, I think this is the one that I probably want to stick with um, between the two because the other one, um, the 7N, it was a little bit darker, but it also seemed to be a little bit warmer. And I kind of like this one because it's closer to um, well, like when that color would start to fade out of my hair, you know, because I'm in the sun all the time and the water and whatnot, so it does start to kind of lift out of your hair a little bit. Also, I do coconut oil treatments and that really pulls dye out of your hair. But aside from all that, um, this is kind of the color that I would end up being left with after all that happened and I actually liked it more. So now I kind of get to start with the color that I want, right? So um, I think I'll actually also really like it as it kind of like fades out too because I can already see you know where my highlights are going to be and I kind of like that um, that when you highlight under when you have highlights underneath uh, when the dye starts to kind of lift you can kind of see some of the highlights a little bit better and they're they're just um, you know they sort of brighten up as time goes on so that's kind of a cool cool uh, I guess effect of having the dye kind of lift out of your hair over time. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I just like to have fun with my hair and I like to keep it low maintenance, although I know 
it doesn't ever seem like it doesn't look low maintenance when you see someone doing their hair at home but um, I only do my hair like three or four times a year so I keep it uh, you know I try to stretch really stretch that time in between sessions um, so a couple tips I have for like what I do personally to stretch that time is you you saw when I'm doing my highlighting right at my roots um, I, I stay away from the scalp like at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch away um, number one because you know the bleach is going to expand so you don't want to have it sucking right up to your scalp and also I, I kind of like apply the highlighter in an uneven sort of way sort of like balayage style um, that way when it starts to grow out it's not quite such a harsh you know straight line of where you applied the highlight or the bleach and then where your roots are growing in. I have really dark hair so I have dark brown hair so when my roots come in you can definitely see it so if, the, the more things that I can do to help them blend when they do come in, the longer I can stretch my time in between sessions. Also what I like to do is just kind of look throughout my hair and see if I need any, any other sort of highlights that I want done. So that's why I did like some of my tips down here and I just kind of grab some of my darker pieces because I do like to leave um, my hair like more natural underneath here so you can see um, how it's like more darker you know underneath um, not as light as the top so I kind of just like to have you know try to create that more multi-dimensional look so it's not like all one color but I find that sometimes I need to kind of oops, my necklace is getting caught under there um, I find that sometimes I just need to you know touch up and kind of brighten up a little bit underneath so that's what I do is I just grab like you know I'll grab like random strands like not all in one bunch I'll just grab thin little random pieces throughout and paint it on and then when they kind of like when you let them go and they spread back out in your hair then it's kind of just like loose and imperfect and that's pretty much my style of doing my hair is just very imperfect messy and just kind of loose and careless but that's uh, how I, I guess I like the overall look. So that is how my hair turned out this time and I guess I will go ahead and let you guys go. I'll shoot a picture outside or like a little clip so you can see how it looks outside in the sunlight because I know it always looks different outside than it does in this room. Alright so before I go outside and photograph I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and do my hair in another style so you can kind of see how it looks curled as well as you did straight. So I'm just using my flat iron. I'm using my Sultra Seductress flat iron. This is my favorite one to use. It works really well for curling hair as well as straightening. So I use it for both. It's actually my favorite way to curl my hair now. I used to use a Sultra bombshell, the conical iron, but I found that this actually helps my my curls stay in longer. Like they last until I actually wash my hair again. So as you saw there, I split my hair in two. So I have the bottom layer and I curl that first and then I let the top layer down. I usually start in the back and then I work my way towards the front. And when I'm doing the top layer, I start further down the hair shaft. So I start below my ears with the curl. And that gives the curls more of a loose, kind of beachy wave sort of look. And also as I get towards the frame of my face, I curl away from my face. I'm not going to use any products like hairspray or mousse. I typically don't. Uh, the only thing that I have in my hair is heat protectant, which I always use before applying any heat, whether it's a blow dryer or a flat iron to my hair. Uh, sometimes I will use my homemade beach wave spray, um, kind of like a sea salt texturizing spray, so sometimes that's what I'll use. But today I'm just going to leave it soft and natural. So thank you guys so much for watching, and if you have any plans for your hair this year, I'd love to hear about them. Let me know in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.